All right, do you like doing puzzles? Um, and find that like little math magic, seeing things pop out that are like, oh, that's cool, how'd that happen? So they don't explain in this lesson a lot about why this works, but um, we can use a little formula that they give us, and that is this one and this one. I'll tell you in a minute what that means. Um, but we're just going to use these in two different ways um, on this page to, um, in one case, just find the sum and the product, and then in the other case, actually solve to find the equation, the quadratic equation. There are other ways of doing it. This is the one the Pace presents. It's not that hard to do, so let's, um, let's tackle it here, okay? If we have this equation, this is one of your math lesson problems, but we're going to figure out what is the sum of the roots. Well, the roots would be what are the x values. If we were to solve this, let's say using the quadratic equation, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, we would get two roots, two values for r. But there's this little magic trick here that says we could figure out what um, find, it says find the sum and the product of the roots. Okay, so we're just going to uh, plug in and solve this. Here we go. The sum of the roots is we first take negative b, so b is negative 9, so negative of negative 9 over a, which is 18. Okay, so all I did was plug into this formula, the opposite of b. b happened to be negative 9, so we're actually doing positive 9 over a, which is 18. So that's 9 over 18, which is 1 half. And we're done. That's all you're doing. <laughs> then it says the product would be, if we multiply the two roots together, we should get whatever the value is of c is, which in this case is negative 2, over the a value, which is 18, which if you reduce this, you'll get a fraction. Got to keep the negative sign. That's it. That's all they're looking for. You're getting two answers. One's the sum, one's the product. Okay? Not too hard. So those first few... Um, I don't, I don't think I need to explain it any further. They give a few examples you can follow. They do show all the answers in the score key if you get stuck, okay? But now let's talk about <clears throat> what if we are given the two answers? This would be root one and this is root two. And we're supposed to go back and figure out what is the actual equation. The a squared, B, I mean the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. What would those values be? Now I looked ahead and problem um, 11 and 12, even though they have a square root of 6 in there, when you just, when you just follow it through, you'll, you, some things will cancel out and you'll find that it really isn't as bad as it looks. There is a trick to this one that I think might trip you up a little bit, so I just want to walk through how we do this, okay? So we don't know what the... Um, a and B are, but here's what we get. Root 1 is 1 half, plus root 2 is 3 fourths, and when we solve that, we will have negative B over A. Well, what do we get here? We have to get a common denominator, so multiply top and bottom by 2, so I have 2 fourths plus 3 fourths, right? So 5 fourths equals negative B over A. Now hold on to that, we're almost done. <clears throat> but now we're going to multiply it. 1 half times 3 fourths has to equal C over A. Well, what does that give us? 3 eighths equals C over A. Now just looking at this, that should mean that C is 3 and A is 8. But over here it says negative B is 5 and A is 4. So I have two different answers for A. And all the other problems, I think it's going to work out that A ends up being the same number. Okay, so if it is the same, then you just take that number and say A is that number. 
Here, we can play a little trick though. We can get this fraction to have the same denominator as this. So we'll just rewrite this as 10 over 8. All right. <clears throat> so just by looking at this, I can say, ah, A is 8. It was 8 here. A corresponds to 8 here. We're good. C, I'm going to come back to B. C is 3. So A corresponds to 8, C corresponds to 3, A corresponds to 8, therefore negative B corresponds to 10. Now be careful, we're looking for B. If the opposite of B is 10, then what does that tell you B has to be? Okay? Bzz, 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 bzz. B has to be the opposite of that, so it would be negative 10. Now the equation then is, we put the 8 in front of the, oops, I started to write A, in front of the x squared. Now we're going to do minus 10x because the B value is the negative 10, so we put that in front of the x. And then the C value is plus 3, and then we set that equal to 0. Da, 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 da. All right, I went further on that one than we normally do, but that was a tough one. But you see what we did there? We had to get a common denominator in order to get the corresponding values. And um, I think with the rest of these, there's only a few of them, you should be able to do that. I would suggest writing these down on a post-it note or a three by five card. And um, if your teacher, supervisor, parent allows you to, I would go ahead and use it when you do the checkup self-test, paste test, because these are not these are not formulas you need to use the rest of your life, um, but they will be helpful as you complete the assignments in this pace.